I normally don't make videos like these, but I got a lot on my plate right now. Currently, I'm doing a series of videos of songs, but I also would like to talk about two other things. I want to discuss Injustice 2, and I want to talk about my idea for a video game, and the steps I'd like to take to make it happen, but this video is about Injustice 2. For those who don't know, Injustice 2 is the sequel to Injustice. Gods Among Us, a fighting game of DC superheroes from the director of Mortal Kombat, and it is wonderful. NetherRealm Studios alternates between MK and the DC Universe and each game is better and better. It really boggles the mind how they're able to release these games every two years, because AAA games usually take three or more years. On the week of E3, the trailer for Injustice 2 released, and it looks fantastic. There are some problems that I'd like to point out later in this video, but I'm still really looking forward to this game because as I said, it's better with every game NetherRealm does. The rosters get better, the storytelling gets better, even Street Fighter V has adapted the MK cinematic style, the gameplay gets deeper, and I thought that Mortal Kombat X was really deep with their three variations per character. It's amazing. I even like how they retain a similar character select screen from MKX. They really should change the announcer though, I think the one from Injustice 1 was better. The gameplay looks phenomenal. They further expanded on Injustice's gameplay mechanics and it all looks very polished. I was especially intrigued with Atrocitus, because I never heard of him before, but he really is a ground and pounder. The gameplay, however, isn't the most impressive thing about the demo from E3, though, it's the character customization. Character customization is nothing new, but for a fighting game, this looked pretty fucking dope. Being able to have a collection of different capes and chest pieces to put on your character is pretty cool. Just think of all the items that Batman would have in reference to all his comic books, TV shows, movies, video games and then be able to mix and match them all. I'm especially intrigued for what they would come up with for characters like Harley Quinn, that don't wear many traditional costumes. Two issues arise though. The first being that for a character like Captain Cold, how would you be able to think of just as many different kinds of costumes as Batman? The second being that in the first Injustice, you could play as either Hal Jordan or Jon Stewart, who are two different races. So I am wondering that if you could play as Jon Stewart, how would you make it so that the two of them aren't separate characters? But this is my one big problem, especially for superheroes, and I don't know if this is legit or not, but it's what I've seen in one of the trailers. Why does Batman and Superman transform with this armor? If you're able to turn into an even more superior form during battles, that's just garbage. I always believed that all superheroes only need one form. That's why I never got into Dragon Ball, that's why Pokemon lost its edge. If you can defeat Lex Luthor, Zod, Brainiac and many other villains on multiple occasions, why do you need to be better? If you're the world's greatest detective that can take out entire gangs of brutes, why do you need to be better? If Goku has to be stronger, then his enemies have to be stronger too, so what is the point? Speaking of Golki though, I heard how Boone stated that they are planning several guest characters, which would be odd for a superhero game, but if Goku turns out to be a character in this game, that would be insane. I'll get more into that later. With that segue, I'll talk about who I think will be in the game. You can count 28 slots, but with MKX, they expanded upon that. I'll be generous and say that about 30 characters will make it into the game. Here is a list of characters already confirmed in some form, Superman, Batman, Aquaman, The Flash, Gorilla Grodd, Atrocitus, Supergirl, Wonder Woman, Captain Cold, Doctor Fate, and Harley Quinn. Eleven characters so far, let's run down the Injustice 1 roster and see who can return for a second round. Green Lantern, in, no brainer. Green Arrow. Almost definitely considering that his show has done very well on the CW. Nightwing, well I don't think they're going to have Robin, so I guess they'll have him once more. The Joker is a certainty. Lex Luthor, while some people have doubts that he could be in, who can replace Superman's greatest enemy? Batgirl, DC has been pushing her recently, and I personally liked her moves in Injustice 1. Cyborg. He's almost certain of returning considering he's a member of the Justice League. Martin Manhunter, same. Catwoman, 
is a very popular character, she's been in Arkham Knight, but I see a possibility of her not making it an injustice too. I'd say she is though, since there's not a character to replace her style. Lobo, I'd say that since a new Lobo movie has just been penned, they'll want to promote it in the future, and they'll keep him. Deathstroke, a great adversary to Batman, Nightwing, and Cyborg, so I don't see why not. Martian Manhunter was a lot of fun, and I don't see why they would not want to expand on him. I'm on the fence with Raven. On one hand, she made for an interesting character, on the other hand, she's not very relevant to the main storyline and it's more often than not they focus on her in a struggle with her father Trigon. Shazam, I'm on the fence with. He might be in, but I think Boone's got another character in mind. Black Adam however, appears to be one of those cases where he's more popular than Shazam. He's been created a lot earlier than Shazam, that's for sure. Solomon Grundy, I knew he was going to be a one-off. Bang, he made the Batman representation a bit too excessive. Killer Frost, while I liked her move set, no. Sinstro, a eh, maybe, but maybe they're only going to make room for one Green Lantern villain again. Zod, nope as we know that he was only going to promote that Superman movie. Hawkgirl, I don't think she's got much focus over the years, so I'll say no. Zatanna, I don't see, as I don't think she's important enough. Doomsday, no, I'll explain later. Ayers, no, I'll explain later. Scorpion, no, I'll explain later. Here's who I think is going to join the Injustice 2 cast, not including DLC. Here is the first character I think will be one of the new ones, Darkseid. He did have a cameo in Injustice, but only as a stage hazard. I felt like they had to decide between him and Doomsday, since the two of them look very similar, and Darkseid isn't a minor character by any means, so perhaps every game, the two of them can take turns? Who knows? Black Canary it seems as though that Green Arrow is finally being expanded upon and that the surrounding character are no longer considered C or D grade. I personally see Canary as a hybrid of Sintel and Jackie Briggs. While I don't think Ayers will return as a character, I think Surt would fill the Killer Frost void. She's a much bigger character than what people might think, and her inclusion is better late than never. Red Hood. His popularity has skyrocketed since Injustice 1. I think there is a possible tie into Batman Arkham Knight. To replace Hawkgirl would be Hawkman. He could have a more masculine move set from Hawkgirl. Why Hawkman should replace Hawkgirl? I have been a fan of the Justice League show that aired in the early 2000s, and I have no idea why among the seven greatest heroes in the DC Universe, there's Hawkgirl among them. I asked, what about Hawkman? Bizarro. I think that this is a very underrated supervillain. People would say, well why would you want a clone in a fighting game? I would reply, he's a clone? He certainly doesn't need to be. He would be the backwards take on Superman. Why not? And last but not least, Black Manta. It would only be appropriate for Aquaman's greatest nemesis to appear if the story greatly focuses on him. And I mean look at his headgear. Nothing like the clean-cut look that most male characters have. So now we go into DLC. If you're considering guest characters for this game, who could you consider eligible? Manga characters like Goku. Just call him Goku and have his Super Saiyan formed just as collectible gear. I don't think that's the case though. If there are any other fictional characters with superhuman abilities, they sure can't come from Marvel or any other comic book publisher. But here's who I think fits that criteria. The Terminator, a character who is deadly and indestructible in his movies. If you go back to December of last year, Boone states that he was almost a character in MPX, and maybe the reason he wasn't was because Fox didn't want him in such a violent game. I mean, if Alien vs Predator can happen in Mortal Kombat, maybe the Terminator vs Robocop can happen in Injustice. I am pretty sure that Scorpion isn't going to make the same character twice in DLC, but there's another Mortal Kombat character that would mesh in nicely, Raiden. Just look. Need I say more? 
we've got two guest characters, but what about actual DC characters? First I give you, Starfire. It would be no question that she will be the first character out for DLC. I don't necessarily believe she would get involved in the main story to be an undisc character, but enough of a fan favored to be DLC. Secondly, we have Rorschach, and if Watchmen creator Alan Moore can get on board with the idea of having his characters in this game, it would be a lot of fun. I could see Rorschach as the Mac driver of the game, focused on handmade weapons and precise counters as the bread and butter of his moves. The last two DLC characters would be Donna Troy and Aqualad. Batman has Robin, Superman has Supergirl, in addition to all the Mortal Kombat characters introducing offspring to the series. Why not Wonder Woman and Aquaman as well? I think there is a lot of potential for the two of them and they can be a sample of what would be to come for Injustice 3. I'll end the video with this. I would like for NetherRealm Studios to make a fighting game about Star Wars. Think about how fun it would be if Boone's team made a game with all the favorite characters from the Star Wars universe, and Scorpion? The major problem is that EA has an exclusive deal with Lucasfilm, so unless EA and Warner Brothers reached an agreement, that game is still a pipe dream.